Hello everyone, Rain here with Audio Plugin Deals and today we have quite the special deal for you because we are looking at Ember Tone's Joshua Bell Violin. This is a beautiful solo violin VST plugin uh, recorded with Grammy winning artist Joshua Bell and his legendary Stradivarius. So can't wait to show this one to you guys. Before we get into the video, just make sure to hit like, subscribe and also turn on notifications so that you can always always know the second one of these exciting deals goes live and then apart from that let's just get right into it okay so we have the basic interface up here for the Joshua Bell violin and as I said this is a solo violin instrument recorded by Joshua Bell himself who if you didn't know is a world-renowned uh, violin player. I mean, there's no arguing that this guy is absolutely world class, one of the very best. And it was recorded on his Stradivarius violin, which has its own story. I mean, it is a 300 year old instrument made by the legendary Stradivari. You know, it's come down through, It's it's got a very fascinating story, it's been stolen twice I think, you can look into that on your own, but it sounds beautiful and he recorded with it, uh, and it is part of his distinct sound, this it is literally a multi-million dollar value violin, so we have this sound that is like million dollar sound. Uh, and we can get right into just having a quick listen to how it sounds straight out of the box. There you go, and you can hear that it sounds really lush and beautiful, you can hear the vibrato and the expression, and what really makes this instrument stand out as well is all of the effort that's gone into making the realistic legato. So the Embertone developers have checked out... Uh, so the Embertone developers have spoken about how passionate they are with legato, and they've really pulled out all the stops to make sure that you have a lot of articulations available to you. If you click on the central sphere here, you can see this list of articulations. There's a couple of, uh, of different menus here as well. Oh, took a minute to load there for some reason, but there you go. So you have the Sulpont and Sultasto variations as well. Uh, so the sustain is sort of the default, but then if you, you know, want to turn on the tremolo, for example, or the pits, uh, we'll put it back onto the sustain, and these are also all accessible from these keys in the lower registers. So obviously the violin is only from uh, is it G3 upwards, and you can see it is blue on the keyboard. And then with these other colors, the red is the latch articulations. So that would be something like pizzicato, uh, which means that if you press the red key, it affects what all the articulations are going forward. It sort of changes the status. And then the yellow is momentary articulations. So if you're holding down a yellow key and you play a note, it will be that type of articulation or legato. So for example, a portamento. If I just click this D2 key with my mouse so you can see, it will play a portamento. Those are the momentary articulations, and then the green ones are instant. So if you're playing a sustained note and you click one of the green keys, it will automatically apply that articulation. So diminuendos and crescendos come under this, and harmonics as well. And the harmonics sound really beautiful, so you can also select harmonics in this menu, so that all of your notes are harmonics. There you go. And as you can hear, these sounds are just absolutely pristine. 
And there's so much customization that goes into making these performances realistic. So of course you have dynamics and you have to pay attention to dynamics because uh, what that is one of the things that makes Joshua Bell so great, along with all of the other world-class violinists and string players. They all pay attention to their dynamics and you can modify that and if you have a MIDI controller, you can assign that to the mod wheel and you can do the vibrato with aftertouch. There's some really beautifully recorded vibrato in this as well. And really, as I said, the standout feature is that legato and the way that all the notes flow into each other and you can utilize them in melodies. So if you do have a keyboard, which I imagine uh, most of you do, a lot of, I know a lot of people produce like that, then yeah, you can use your left hand in the lower registers and really perform this instrument uh, and it's like he is in the room. But if you need to add a little bit of humanization into the sound, and for example, with those dynamics, if you're not able to sort of pay too much active attention to the dynamics while you're playing it in, or you don't have, you know, a velocity sensitive keyboard, for example, uh, then Embertone have you covered with the intuition page, which has a lot of ways to automate humanization as backwards as that sounds. So regarding the dynamics, a great place to start is looking at this constant dynamic movement. So this is actually an LFO, but all it does is it slides that dynamic uh, slider up and down from this page here. The LFO just affects that. You can set the amount as this percentage here and the rate. And it won't sound like the LFOs you'll have on your synth patches where it's just a very aggressive sort of what, 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 what. It is a very natural and very subtle sounding one. So even if I make it quite fast, let's say the fastest and really aggressive, you can hear how that will sound. So there you go, that was the least subtle way to implement that. Uh, oh, I see, I didn't quite have it all the way up, but there you go. So, but if you wanted to do something more realistic, you can make it slower, you can make it around five seconds, you can make it, you know, 40, 50%, something like that. And it will just adjust those dynamics and add a nice ebb and flow to your playing. And then you have all these other controls. So the slur bow variance is a way of it deciding automatically if each note will be a bowed legato or a slurred legato because they have both. So uh, you may have noticed if we had the sustain on that, this one, this red key here is the bow legato and you'll see the articulation it shows there. So that's a legato where uh, he moves the bow and, and it, the bow changes direction. Whereas if you have a slurred legato, that is where he's not re-bowing. And so it will move between those and this percentage will set how often it's a bow and how often it's a slur. And then so it can automate that so it's not always using the same articulation but if you want it to, you can set it to always use the same one. Then you have the vibrato, non-vibrato variants as well. So same thing. So it will add these variations if you want it to. Now here, we're getting into the territory where it's really special and what's really going to make this instrument stand out and be more realistic is the pitch instability. So obviously a violin is a fretless instrument. And even a world-class player like Joshua Bell or anyone else who's not a literal robot will not always land it perfectly, absolutely in tune to the scent. And so the attack pitch instability will give how much variance there is 
and how much instability to that pitch on the initial attack of the sound. So if we set it really high, so it still obviously sounds in tune, it just makes it sound a little bit more natural. If you have it all the way down or turn this off, it will sound more like a MIDI library. So a good place to have it might be around the 50% uh, 50 mark. And then you have the speed pitch instability. And this is a real game changer because what this does is it means that for fast passages, it's more likely to be more unstable. So that's obviously because a violin player who is absolutely shredding and playing something really fast, it's gonna be much harder to have the pitch completely accurate. So yeah, the faster your run of notes, the more realistic that run of notes will sound depending on how you set the instability. And that is one of the things that can make uh, string libraries sound more robotic and less realistic is when the pitch is absolutely perfect on fast runs. So we can have a little test of that. Uh, let's see. If we have it off, And if we have it very high, and you can hear it just sounds a little bit more human. And it is subtle, again, it, you know, they're not trying to make it sound out of tune, but this is a really fantastic addition to humanize again. So, you know, Players like Joshua Bell and all your other favorite violinists, they are pretty good. And you also want your uh, your song to sound in tune. So, you know, maybe around 40-50% again is a good amount. And the interval pitch instability is a similar concept. It just means that the wider the interval between two notes, the more unstable it will be. Again, adding this naturalization, uh, humanization. Okay, and so the multi-stop attacks is the final thing. So uh, it's worth pointing out to explain this, the poly button here, that's to make it polyphonic. So. That added the note to what I was originally playing. If that's off. I was still holding down both keys, but you didn't hear the old one, it cut it off. But even in uh, monophonic mode, you can play chords. And the multi-stop attacks, if you select one of these buttons, it just means that it will break up the chord into like a one-two punch or another ratio. See how it's going. So, these are also variations of different timing for if you play chords, how it will approach the, the little second jump and then the speed at which that happens as well. And then finally, we have character. And this is a little bit more simple, but it is of course crucial to your sound as well. So you have the virtual space, concert halls, cathedrals, and then we have the tone, natural, warm, bright, clear, dark, bold. So this way you can personalize the tone and everything. So everything we've heard has been on natural. If we switch it to warm, and then if we put that into say the cathedral, And if we want to hear the effect of that room a bit more, we can dial up the reverb, which you can adjust from any of these menus. And then they have recital halls, small rooms, studio, 
yeah, we can we can listen to a few more of these as well. I can just cycle through through these a bit more. And then how would that sound if we go for the bright? And the delicate. Old, and we can switch it up and I know I'm obviously not going through every possible combination but uh, you know you can play around with this yourself so we have bold we can dial back the reverb a little bit I actually really like the digital halls you know it's a little bit juxtapo juxtaposed to the sort of natural beauty of everything else about this plugin and the the general feeling of it you know trying to replicate this classical performance but the digital reverb actually sounds really nice as well, so. And we have clear and dark as well. And you can keep experimenting with all these rooms with a dry and a wet sound. I mean, the violin stands up as a very dry sound anyway. There you go. And obviously you can then keep experimenting with adding all the different articulations you want. There is so much depth for customization if you want to go into it. I mean, how far you push this and how much you explore is really up to you. And there's very few limits here, really. Uh, so yeah, absolutely fantastic level of depth and attention to detail from the developers. With that in mind, and with this VST's ability to tell stories, I have created a piece of music myself uh, to show this off within context, I suppose. Um, so I hope you like it. It's uh, a little bit weird, as you maybe have come to expect from me if you've watched a few of these videos. It's a little bit Olivier Messiaen inspired. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on the VST as well. And definitely check out this deal because this is a really special instrument. But that's all from me. I'll just let the track play out and I'll get out of your face. But I've been Rain with Audio Plugin Deals. See you in the next one.